What do you do when a dodgy retaining wall threatens to stop your entire project? I'm Josh, a builder here in New Zealand, and this is the gnarliest building site I have taken on. We're standing down here on the road, and the building platform is 17 metres up there. Right on the edge of the property, we have an old wall that was failing. It was leaning over way too much, and it threatened to stop the whole project. I'll show you the wall, I'll show you why it was failing, I'll show you the solutions we've come up with. If you haven't seen my last video on this site, go and check that out. Just finished pouring 24 holes for these huge 300mm retaining posts. Let's go and have a look at this retaining wall. When we started our earthworks and started preparing the driveway, we noticed that this wall was going to be an issue. One of the first things we did is stopped work and informed our client and the engineer. The engineer was engaged to complete a report and let us know what our options were. First and foremost, we established that the wall did not meet the requirements of supporting a driveway. Here's a couple of photos from the engineering report. You can see in this one here, the left post has moved the most both in plane and out of plane. Most of the timber posts are leaning away from the retained soil. That's not good. And here you can see concrete cracking at the base of the timber post. No cracking is present anywhere else. This indicates that the wall has been moving for a while. So this retaining wall was built sometime between 2005 and 2011. It wasn't on the original consent and then it showed up on the second consent. And even though it's on the edge of the boundary, technically it's owned by the neighbor, it became our client's problem because it's their driveway getting up to their property that this wall was supporting. There was a couple of options, including rebuilding the wall or putting another wall behind this one. In the end, the most cost-effective solution was to implement a dead man. So what is a dead man? In engineering and construction, a dead man refers to a buried or anchored object used to provide support or stabilization. It's commonly used in retaining walls, anchors for structures or foundation stabilization. Obviously here, we are using it as an anchor six meters away to provide support to the existing retaining wall. As well as retaining walls not being supported, you guys are not supporting this channel. Only 20% of you are subscribers. If you're one of the 80% that hasn't subscribed, go ahead, click the button. It really does help us out. We buried these 300mm ECD posts into the ground and then with RB25 bars, we tied the old wall to the new dead man, the new structural anchor. To get the bars in a metre below the surface, that means obviously we have to dig out a metre of dirt. And that doesn't sound like a lot, you go six metres wide by 10 metres long-ish. And a metre deep, that's another 60 cubes we had to pull out. This is our dead man solution. These have been concreted in. We've let it set now for a week and a half and we're gonna thread the rods this Friday, but we're not gonna crank it up until next week. Obviously all of this has been inspected by an engineer and we're just following their plans. On this side of the drawing here, you can see the new dead man and you can see how far into concrete it needs to go and that the RB25 is buried a metre below the driveway. So these are RB25s, it's a threaded rod, it's six metres long, it's been galv dipped, and look at these giant nuts. The, this, this, not my ones. <laughs> Basically we put it through, thread it through our dead man, screw it into the failing retaining wall, crank it all up, and it's never gonna move anywhere. 
you can also see that we're putting it in a 500 mil hole and we are encasing it in 20 MPA concrete. You can see here on the other side, the existing retaining wall. We all know it's definitely not on that angle. So like, I want to clear out all the agapanthers and all of it and dig down behind the wall. We've got the RV25 and we've got the fab retaining wall. Drilling a 30 mil hole here, the one on the dead man, put the rod through. You can see the RB25 going through the existing wall and existing poles. And then it's got a massive 150 by 150 by 20 mil thick washers. Not only did they have to get custom made, they had to get bent to the shape of the pole. We also had to then drill them out after they'd been bent so that we can still get our bar through, tighten them up, pull it all together. It just acts as a huge big structural anchor that prevents that wall falling over anymore. And our client can put their driveway on it and finish off getting to their build. For these guys, we will hopefully be able to crank it up and get it a little straighter than it is right now and give it another 50 to 100 years of life. Once we'd tightened that as much as we could, we now were able to get it inspected by the engineer and backfilled. This is it. This is the wall we had to fix. Every 500 mils we've buried a post here and then it ties into a post over there. A metre below us, the bars go through and then we've had to compact the driveway back over it. We've had a geotech engineer this morning and he's signed off all of our work to date, which is awesome. We're working with a great bunch of engineers on this site who understand that what's in your drawings and what happens on site don't always work together and so it's definitely like a collaboration between us all to make sure that we tick all the boxes. So it's such a good feeling to be standing here now at the top of the drive knowing that that wall down there is not only strong enough to support a portaloo but can support the driveway and the trucks and the materials and everything else we want to achieve on site. You know, up until now, everything has been walked from the bottom to the top. It's been painful. Now we can get on to the job of building the house and there is a huge basement garage underway. And we'll talk about that more in our next site update.